Feedback. Feedback. Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. 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 You liberals who have lifted them up, Howard. Paul, you conservatives make a mistake. You can't afford to strangle hope in people. Without hope, people become dangerous. No, Howard, you liberals have let them invade our society. You give them jobs, political jobs. Paul, you missed the point. It's only the smart ones we move up. <laughs> that makes it even worse. Oh, you know, we have to move them up. If we leave a smart one in the ghetto, he might develop into a leader against us. But if we raise him up into white society, we neutralize him. He feels compelled to try to act like us. He loses his identity and uh, his racial anger, if he has any. He becomes alien to his brothers. They realize he sold them out and they grow to hate him. He becomes worthless to them and safe for us. Uh, no, thank you. In fact, in his love for the creature comforts, except for his color, He's become one of us. And we are all the way live right here at WHPR, 160 Victor Street, Highland Park, Michigan, the capital of Detroit. My name is Theo Broden. I want to thank you all for joining us uh, this morning. And um, I want to thank those of you who helped to sponsor this program. And for those of you who are considering sponsoring the program, please make your check or money order out to Hood Research. But if you prefer, you can make your check or money order out to WHPR Broadcasting Company. We have no objection to that, but we would ask that you mail it to Hood Research at P.O. Box 4416, Detroit, Michigan, 48204. Again, that's mail it to Hood Research at P.O. Box 4416, Detroit, Michigan, 48204. And my co-host, the BD. We welcome you to the program. I want to say good morning to uh, Rosa, to Barbara and Vera, to uh, Tom and to Sam, and to uh, Les Little, of course, and Jay, way on the other side of Detroit. And um, I um, know that we have so many of you who uh, tune in. Uh, um, and we got uh, Calvin and, and Carla. And um, I don't know, it's just so many. I, I'm, I'm running out of remem <laughs> remembrances here. Uh, who do you want to uh, say good morning to? Uh, good morning to uh, Sister Jackie. Communicated with her over the weekend, always full of knowledge, and I'm always re uh, receptive to that, along with Shane, Ruth Ann, Brother Fred, Brother Smith Bay, Sister Frida Washington, Sister Sheila Raglan, and as I always ask that you have pen and paper handy and that you inform your family, friends, co-workers, neighbors that feedback is on the air. That's right. And I want to say good morning to uh, Paul and, and uh, to Carl and Ron. And, you know, um, we really appreciate all of you who tune in and, and share with others that we are uh, on the air and um, uh, Tawana and, and uh, Val and, <laughs> and we got Sylvia Didi to watch as well. Our uh, meeting will be coming up on the 14th of this month and um, we want you to uh, join us at the Debo Center from uh, noon until 6. We have a doctor who is going to be there to talk about uh, um, reducing your stress and about fundamental medicine. That should be very interesting. And if you have some information that you want to bring, please do. And we also have candidates who come. And you have an opportunity to ask your own questions of those candidates who are running for office. This morning, we have with us State Representative Rosemary Robinson, and we want to thank her for joining us this morning. Um, tell us uh, a little about State Representative Rosemary Robinson. Who is Rosemary Robinson? Well, 
it's there. I, 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 I Miss Broughton, you've known me a long, long time. Yes. And uh, I'm a Detroiter mm -hmm. through and through. I came here when I was in my 20s mm -hmm. and never left. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I'm just uh, a Detroiter who has worked in the community and, and grew with the people in the community. Mm -hmm. well, well, actually, I grew because of the help of the people in the community. Mm -hmm. When I first came to Detroit, I moved into the Jeffrey Projects, mm -hmm. and I was alone with three children, mm -hmm. and that was back in 1964. Wow. And before that, I lived in Highland Park when I came here in 60. Ah, the <laughs> capital and, of Detroit. <laughs> I know. I lived on, I'll tell you where I lived. I lived on, first place I lived was on near Brighton. Uh -huh. Then I lived on Pilgrim, and I lived on Highland, and I lived uh, on Avalon, mm -hmm. all in a matter of like uh, four years. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, uh, it was a changing community, and the houses were being sold, and they were, so as soon as I get a comfortable place, uh, they would evic evict me, you uh -huh. know, give me notice because they were going to sell, sell the Sell the house. Mm -hmm. And it was a terrible time. I mm -hmm. mean, it was turbulence. Hmm. So I went to Detroit, and I went on to the university and Wayne State. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, th those years in Jeffrey, uh, it was only through the help of the community and the women in the community mm -hmm. who helped me babysit and helped me go to school, mm -hmm. gave me time to, you know, to make that option. Mm -hmm. and, and it was at that point my political career began in, in Detroit because... Uh, I don't know. It just it was it was a different world, and and people don't understand Detroit. Detroit has a special spirit, a special grit. Mm -hmm. We're tough. We oh, are tough, yeah. and we don't take any nonsense. But there's so much love and compassion among us, you know. Oh yeah. And given, I, they never want to see anyone down and out in Detroit. I mean, I, there's always someone to put a hand out for you and mm -hmm. try to pick you up. Mm -hmm. And so I, I've been very blessed by being a Detroiter. And so I, I you know, I, I had a lot of help from the people in the community. And so I stayed in that community after I moved to Jeffries. I moved two blocks over. Mm -hmm. And I always had, went back to Jeffries, kept up my ties. And as things changed and communities changed, I still have that same connection. Oh. And now, and so, you know, I ran for office in 1970. Hmm. And it was between the Jeffreys and the Brewster Projects mm -hmm. where the women elected me. Oh, wow. So, I, so I, like I say, I'm a Detroiter true and true. Yeah. I met some of those women at the um, uh, program. It's, it's, what, been about two years ago now? And uh, uh, many of them who uh, remembered you and have stayed friends with you yes. were there at that luncheon. Yeah, yes, I, I, I thought that was wonderful. That's why it was so easy for me to get elected in Detroit, I think, because <laughs> I have all these friends, all mm -hmm. these long-life friends that I have not, we, we haven't turned our backs on another. We still stay connected. Right. Well, they, they know that uh, you were sincere about giving back to the community, so they were glad to give to you and, and support you. Yeah, but my political career's over now. I'm done. Oh. No, I don't mean my activism. I'm going back to the courtroom. I'm going back to defend my young men. Oh, but okay. But I'm not going to prevent every young man from going to prison as, as long as there's a breath in my body. Mm -hmm. But, no, I'll still be active because we have so many challenges. Mm-hmm. We've got to stop all this relocation. Oh, yeah. We've yeah. got to stop the destruction of our communities. Mm-hmm. But I think time is on our side, Ms. Broughton, mm. because the national trend is all these youngsters, these millennials who have moved into Chicago, Boston, and D.C., or down south in Charleston, mm. they're leaving. They're, they had their urban experience. They're getting older, mm. so they'll be leaving, and hopefully we'll get things back the way they were. <laughs> they were yeah, so uh, the media yeah. were going to say uh, Well, we have a couple of callers, but oh. I want to say oh. that uh, Mrs. Robinson and I have a connection. You were in the Jeffries in 64, I believe you said? Yes. Uh, my family moved there in 67. No. Now, we were in the, uh, they used to have the big ones and the small ones. We were in the small ones. Okay. Yeah. That, that was three, uh, it was 606 over there along the lodge? Yeah, we were at 3053 4th Street. Okay. Although it was oh, still oh, a service you, Oh, you were on the other side. Yes. Oh, there's always <laughs> mythology about that part of the project. 
Yes. <laughs> that was the that was the scary place to go because that's where all, they had a lot of guns over there, and that's where the black nationalists were uh, uh, back the in the sixties. Yeah, oh, it was okay. so funny, and it's just people going to work every, every day, day. Really raising their family, yeah. and this big. And we used to laugh about the myth, you know? propaganda, propaganda. Yeah. Oh. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, we'll see the phone Someone calls. The phone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Would you share? Hello. Yes, would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Oh, my name is the East Side Lady, and I'm calling in regards of some very important information. And Rosemary, you know who I am. Yes, I do. And I want to let you know that I've been arrested in my house for the last two weeks, and people have been calling me. They won't answer the phone. I can't get out of my house. I called this number because I knew y'all would be on television today, and I had to break a door down to call this number so somebody would come over here and help me and get me out of here. Valerie Burns is involved in this. There's a whole lot of other people that work for the city that's involved in this. I got marks on my arms, the back and the front, where they put me in a hospital, and I just got out not too long ago. But I want y'all to send the police over here so somebody can help me because I have nobody that will come over here and help me and they won't let nobody answer these phones. My son can't answer the phone. So would y'all send somebody over here at 4405 Bewick to help me get out of this house? All right. And I'm Thank over you. here and I'm a, I'm a, a arrested person in my own home. Okay. And I'm not playing. Please send somebody over here. I just called... I just called one person, and she said she's going to try to get somebody to come over here. And they said people have been calling the television. I can't even watch television. Mm. Okay. We, we'll do that. Give, that, give the address. 4405 yep. Bewick. Give, give me the address again. 4405 Bewick and Canfield, right on the corner. Okay. All right. Please send the police and everybody you possibly can. My arms are oh. messed up. I can't eat unless they want me to eat. And my okay. daughters are involved in this also. I'm not crazy. Okay, we got the address. I talk too much and I mad at other people's business. Okay, we got the address. Thank you right, for thank calling. Thank you very much, You're welcome. Theo. Thank you all very much. Please mm -hmm. send some people over here. All right, we I have the address. I asking about me on television, but they won't let nobody call me. I can't talk to nobody. Okay, we got the address. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh-huh. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how are you viewing us, please? Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. Uh, Slice of 10 of 91 Comcast. All right. I just want to thank your guests so much. I never forget. And I always thank you and love you for helping and encouraging me when I was dealing with the uh, unemployment. Uh, where they were uh, telling everybody that they owed them money and that they had got paid the claim. Oh, they wow. still send the letters out. And I uh, won my case, and I just want to thank your staff and you for intervening <laughs> and encouraging me to fight the good fight. Oh, and man. I won because many people, they took their assets, they took their uh, paychecks, their homes, uh -huh. and there was a lawsuit where many people did get uh, get back what was taken. Mm -hmm. and I, I just want to say thank you so much for all you do and all you've done. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for calling. Wow. That's mm -hmm. it. Okay, now. No. Um, as, as it relates to um, this election that we have going on, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, residents in the city of, of Detroit in the district that includes Highland Park, as a matter of fact, they are without a senator to represent them. That's correct. And as the 13th district in the city of Detroit, we are without a member of Congress to represent us. That's correct. And we have a governor who rushes mm -hmm. to have uh, special elections for people in other areas than the one that we're in. So um, the midterm election is extremely important for us to um, shed ourselves of uh, folks who uh, support this governor who doesn't give a rat's assets about us. And um, it's very important. Can you talk about um, the kind of, um, oh, let's see, um, qualities we should look for 
in candidates running for the offices that are up now? The most important thing to me mm -hmm. is that an individual who runs for public office mm -hmm. should have roots in the community. Mm, okay. They should know the problems. Like, you know, I lived in the community. I knew what we went through from the, uh, from the time of stress with, you know, mm -hmm. with the police brutality. Right. But, but one of the, you know, the first issues that I, mean, I live in the projects was the murder of the young prostitutes on the east side. Mm -hmm. And we women got together, and it was police officers who were doing it. Oh. Yeah, this is back in the 60s. Mm. And then we, it's always been a, a, we've always confronted challenges in our community. Mm -hmm. And we always, there was greater participation. We had greater energy back in the 60s and 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. And somehow we get tired. I mean, our young people were incarcerated. They, they took, they decimated our, system, our city. Mm -hmm. And so it left us to us older folks who, who us, who as we grow older, we still have to fight the challenges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at Detroit and you look at the uh, impact of mass incarceration that it has had, I, I could cry. All those men should have been home, having jobs, having children, and filling the homes and keeping and maintaining the city. Mm -hmm. They took it away from us with that mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's very important to me to close these prisons, to get these men who are older now, but mm -hmm. at least get them home for some part of their lives. Mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. prevent young people from going to prison. Oh, yeah. uh, that's the biggest goal with me because right, I've right. seen the impact. But, but the point is we have had so many of our people, our strength, our fiber taken from us. So I say we have to look at individuals who have a root. They might be older. We might have to vote for older people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that seems sad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I notice there's a, a trend, especially in Detroit, uh, that if you move in, you can run for office because you can oh, buy yeah. these folks. Uh, you just keep sending mailing after mailing after uh -huh. mailing, tell them how pretty you are, how handsome you are, mm -hmm. posing on stools, you know, pursing your lips, looking mm -hmm. like prints. You know, <laughs> you know, it's just, right. it's yeah. an insult to uh, us. I agree, I agree. First, I think, is roots mm -hmm. and a true love of people. I mean, you, ha you know, and the other thing is, one of the dangers with politics, especially in Lansing, is the lure of the buck. Mm. Money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every, and the lo lobbyists are always throwing around money. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, it's even more dangerous than that with me. I've discovered, uh, as I've been up there, uh, they run the place. Oh. Yeah, they have these group, what they call group study groups or something when legislation's there. Yeah. The so-called stakeholders meet, and they work with the language, and they gather up the votes in closed doors. Mm. where the public isn't there. Then it comes into the committee. We have two minutes to talk about it. Two minutes. And, and then they cut me off when I'm asking questions. Oh. Now, I have uh, historically voted no a majority of time because I'll go to the maker of the bill and mm -hmm. I'll say, what is your intent? What is this going to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, what good is it? And if they can't answer or they can't tell me what the bill says, I'm not going to vote for it because I know it's someone else's bill. It's, they, not, mm -hmm. it's not that legislator's they bill. They have told them, put this out there. Yeah. But I want to get back to the candidate thing. It's mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. uh, we got all these people coming in. They come, First of all, they come to Detroit and get jobs. They get nonprofits or they work for some governmental agency. Mm -hmm. And they come from all over state mm -hmm. and all over the country oh mm -hmm. we got that's another angle these people come in for all the country with a couple million dollars want to buy us up mm -hmm. and flip us mm -hmm. and that's another danger that's there's mm -hmm. so many and i fight as hard as i can miss broughton to keep the stability of this community the best i can mm -hmm. i mean the money that's going to gilbert the money that's going to illich from the school aid fund from the brownfield funds yeah. i mean they don't need our money. They're billionaires. And you know, uh, when it comes to arenas, I read somewhere that in Canada, those who have sports arenas have to pay for the sports arenas themselves. They don't use other folks' money like here in uh, Michigan or Detroit specifically. 
Yeah, and, and the thing is, that beyond the sports, we're, we're developing uh, market-rate housing. Well, m millions and millions of dollars are coming in here from my, to downtown, the midtown, or wherever they want to call it. That's, I call it, the, it looks like a movie set. It's mm -hmm. not real. But anyhow, mm -hmm. they put money there for market rate, and then they have this fraud about one-third will be for low income. Yes. And then when they get the applications for low income, they call and they don't answer the phone, or they claim they don't answer the phone. They have to move on and fill the vacancy, right? Oh. But yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, wow. it's all kind of, Oh, yeah. It's, oh, just, it's wow. a constant fight for us to maintain right. some stability for our elderly mm -hmm. and our senior buildings. God knows what's in store for them. And the a ones on the are, water? The senior yeah, buildings? Yeah, well, downtown in the core area. Mm -hmm. All those, about 22 buildings, 30 buildings down there. Oh. Uh, that Their HUD renewal comes up within the next, many of them the next couple, five years. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. want to alarm people, but if they change the way HUD wants to operate on who's going to live there, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you got this project with the new courts over there and the new jail over on uh, Warren oh, Avenue. Right, right, right. So much, and that's to accommodate Gilbert so he can have uh, a stadium, a soccer stadium or something, or mm -hmm. expand his, right. his mm -hmm. casino. Yeah, yeah, it came up then. Uh, it died out of the media that he didn't know, no, no, so I could say. He didn't want people to talk about it. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Well, it's just, um, I, I mean, I'm just rambling on because there's so no, many. No, it's so much going on. Pertinent. Very but, pertinent. It is. but what I want to say to my friends mm. and uh, the people I love in Detroit mm. and who I care the most about, don't uh, get alarmed. Just stay strong. Uh, you have people out here who are doing the fight. Mm -hmm. Don't be frightened. And that's what I'm afraid of. They're intimidating my seniors. And I, it's, they're not going to be intimidated. You know, They're just mm -hmm. not. I'll be there. I'm going to continue to fight after I'm out of office. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to f not going to give up on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a caller. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Yeah, Tyrone. Over the Internet. Yeah, Ms. Robinson. Uh, this is Tyrone talking to you. Oh, hi, Tyrone. Yeah, I'd like to know, with Detroit being under receivership <laughs> and under the financial uh, uh, commission, uh, financial commission. Yeah, the review where commission. Where they uh, control lock, stock, and barrels that Detroit is in under uh, uh, what they call autocratic form of gov dictatorship. Yes, Tyrone. Tell me... I'm on Hartwell, and with that, under, we under those types of control. Say, for instance, we get somebody to to Washington, a congressman. Well, how would they help me on Hartwell in the neighborhood and the rest of Tyrone's in the neighborhood? And when we consider that all the function of local government is done by authorities controlled by suburbians, how did why is it? Why should we fight? Should we fight the dictatorship, or, or just go on and let people to Congress that can't do nothing for us? What do you think about that? What What do you think? Should we? Which one we should be be fighting? Should we be fighting and uniting against the dictatorship, a law that denies our vote of any indignity of dignity? I'm going to ask you that. And I'm going to... Tyrone, uh, thank Tyrone, you, thank, you. thank you. Tyrone, you're absolutely correct. You know, <laughs> we lost the Lighting Commission. That's now an authority. Who do you call? I mean, I know, I know as a state rep, they answer me. Mm -hmm. But who does the average citizen call about lighting problems? It's, it's, it's a cushioned authority that is not elected by the people. The water is now an authority. We lost that. Okay. And I think it's very important, Tyrone, I think you brought up a very important fact that most people in Detroit don't know, is when we went through the bankruptcy, and I always voted no on all that legislation because I never, ever saw the figures balance out. It was all smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. And what has happened is they created this financial review board, which is what you're talking about. That will expire, I don't know, another six, seven years. Mm -hmm. But they run the city. It's the bankers and the bondholders. But mm -hmm. they do have two elected officials on there. Mm -hmm. They have the mayor and Brenda Jones. Mm -hmm. 
and they have, you know, mm -hmm. th that there's no real representation for the people. But they can veto, as you know, Tyrone, any action that the mayor of the city takes. Yeah. They're the final word, and we're under this board that most people in Detroit don't even know mm -hmm. exists. Mm -hmm. People in Detroit don't even know. It's a real danger to representative government. But it all goes back to this, Tyrone, where we all fall short. We do not elect the right people. Mm -hmm. We do not elect people from our communities, mm -hmm. people who we can trust, people that will not be bought off. That's where we have to begin. We have to recruit and really, truly grassroots support people who are going to advocate for the individual and for community control. We lost community control. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we always have people bamboozling us. We used to have a network in Detroit where we would talk to one another, where we could get on the phone and the word would spread to the Jeffreys, to the Herman Gardens. We could get the word out. This is bad. This is bad. This is not, this person is not really looking out for it. We have to reunite our communications, Tyrone. Mm -hmm. We can't just, you know, and, and as you and I are getting older, Tyrone, it's getting harder. I know you're up near my age. I'm 79 almost, and mm -hmm. you're getting close to that. Mm -hmm. and, and we get tired, but we still have to keep fighting. Oh, yeah, I agree. So now we were talking about what to look for. Yeah, and a person of, running, Right. I mean, do and they, somebody with the roots. With the roots. And, and, they, mm, they, who the lived here, who, who, who has... And who, just move in and run. Yeah, and someone mm -hmm. who is raising their family. Mm -hmm. Someone who's made a commitment to the community. To the community. Someone mm -hmm. who bought a home, someone mm -hmm. who's not just got an apartment somewhere on Third Avenue or down in, in, in you know, some f flat they're renting, and if they don't win, they're going to move on back wherever they came where from. Where they came from, yep, yep. Uh, got and it. we got a bunch of those people running throughout the city. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we welcome people. I don't want to sound like I don't want to see Detroit diverse. I love the diversity. I'm diverse. Yeah. And, and, well, it, grow, and it works. Well, the gubernatorial uh, candidate list is truly diverse. <laughs> we got somebody on the line. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Oh, Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? The name is Bradley, and I live in Detroit. Thank you for coming. And I'm listening on 91. I just have a question. Sure. Uh, I know that how Allen Park was under the same thing as Detroit about the bankruptcy, and another city, I can't remember that name. And I'm just wondering how they got out from under the bankruptcy so fast, and Detroit is under it for 20-something. Uh -huh. And I was just wonder if your guest can answer that. Oh, okay. Are you talking about him, Tramick? And if, you can, if, you, if, you, if she can't tell me well, who I can go and ask. And get get oh, an answer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thanks uh -huh. for calling. I'll hang up. Uh -huh. Bye bye. We, See, we, we uh, think it was Hamtramck. Allen no, Park was the other city. Uh, yeah, Allen Park. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I I, I represent Hamtramck mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Detroit. Well, but you know, it's a very small portion of my district, Hamtramck. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I I do represent the entire city. Okay. And I met when when we found out when I found out Hamtramck was going to go into bankruptcy, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, they were going to take over emergency manager. I met to prevent, I met with Dylan was the guy who was in charge of the treasury at that time with oh, Snyder. Oh, Andy Dillon. Andy Dillon. Yeah. And I'm with several, uh, Bert Johnson, Senator Bert Johnson was at that meeting and the attorney okay. from Hamtramck uh -huh. and several of the elected officials. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to stop it. For some reason. What? Yeah, it made no sense to me. Maybe they were paid. I don't know, but uh, they, but anyway, so they went into uh, under the emergency manager, mm -hmm. and um, that was like four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Five, maybe four and a half. Mm -hmm. But what I did was I worked with Kathy Squares. I, f I followed and asked for reports, constant reports on what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I babysat the city. I didn't interfere with the, st the councilman and the mayor of Hamtramck don't even know what I did. Mm -hmm. they, then they set up, she wrapped it up, and then they put it in an advisory board. And they now are gone. Mm -hmm. They have a $6 million surplus. Mm hmm Wow. But, uh, and then, of course, I helped to get whatever I could uh, for their from federal grants for their firemen because mm -hmm. that was a big problem. The fire and police, the pension mm -hmm. was their big debt. And that sort of helped, uh, you know, leave that. I babysat that whole situation 
Yeah. And now they have $6 million deficit. Plus surplus. Um, surplus. surplus. I'm sorry, uh -huh. surplus. Mm -hmm. But uh, if they're not careful, they'll be back in the same boat again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm hoping, I wish them all the luck in the world, mm -hmm. they're going to have to still have a stringent budget and they're going to have to watch their pennies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, But mm -hmm. uh, that's the only involvement I've ever had with, in, in with terms that. of hands-on right. where I was able to help. Right. Well, as it relates to Allen Park... I don't when, know. when the uh, tax credit was uh, announced by the governor uh, for those cities that were going to do whatever they were going to do, mm -hmm. uh, Allen Park began building a, um, a movie studio. Oh, yes. Because tax credits for uh, those who would come here to film their movies uh, were uh, going to get a nice break. That was a scam. But I voted against it. The, but what happened in Allen Park was when it was eliminated, the movie studio that Allen Park was building was like stopped in, in uh, mid, mid construction. Yeah, they overextended the resources. Right. And so supposedly that's what threw them into bankruptcy. But somewhere down the line, they got assistance too. Yeah, they did. And, and they were uh, pulled out of it. Okay, go ahead. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Uh, good morning. This is Vera, and I'm looking at you on Comcast 91. Oh, thanks for calling, Vera. Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing that has been talked about when it comes to sellouts and who's, who's selling us out, and that's these mega preachers oh, from these churches. That's how do we deal with that? Because they go in and they bamboozle their, their congregation, mm -hmm. and they go exactly the way their preachers tell them to vote. And I think these are the same preachers who were standing behind Snyder when he got elected. Mm -hmm. Same preachers were standing behind Duggan when he got elected. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of our problem right there. Mm, that's a good point. Let, let me what say this say? to you. I've never How do we deal with those mega preachers like Wendell Anthony and Edgar Vann and all those other snakes? So Vera, I'll hang up and listen. Vera, can I tell you my experience? In, in, I've been running for office. I ran 20 elections in Detroit. And I've been successful in all 20. Mm -hmm. And I've won because the people voted for me. But in all my years, I've never gone to churches, to politics. Mm -hmm. I believe, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar, and to God the things that are God's. I would never mix my politics. I think in my one hand, all the years I've been in politics, where I ever went and spoke at a church that might even appear to be political. Mm. that I, I always believe in separation of church and state, mm -hmm. and that's very important. So we have freedom of religion. We keep it out of politics. So I'm not one who goes to a preacher and seeks their endorsement or go to a church in politic. Mm -hmm. I think it's bad form, and I think it's the Bible says, you know, so separate those things. Mm -hmm. and uh, keep the, the changers out of the temple. So it would be nice if more politicians respected that those Christian principles or mm -hmm. those basic principles of the state, mm -hmm. being, you know, the Constitution, separation of state and church. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, and we have a call, but it's interesting you, you say that they should respect those principles, but if you have unprincipled people, then uh, there's no success hey, it's in It's kind of hard. You know, I, it, it does make me wonder about um uh what's that church uh solomon kinlock is the preacher's name uh he has a uh, church on east grand boulevard yeah, temple or something that was yeah. rented um from who was it Edgar Van? and um he has another one on uh ethel southwest detroit i guess that's where he started and um, recently it was announced that he has one on joy road near the southfield freeway i think he has one out in canton too Oh, okay. Well, a big fancy one. I I guess now the I wonder who paid for that one. The um the the question <coughs> has to do with the fact that he is um the brother of um Jonathan Kinlock, mm -hmm. who sent a uh, a memo to the state uh, governor Snyder, telling him that it's okay if the 13th district does not have. Uh, a, a member of Congress anymore, and there have been a number of bills that our Congress member person should have voted on. It's okay that we don't have representation. You don't have to do a special election, but uh, it's been reported that 
uh, there are uh, candidates who frequent Solomon Kinlock's churches. And you just got to wonder, is he continuing to open churches, like Vera was saying, for the purpose of telling the young people what to do and who to vote for? Yeah, well, it's happening in schools, too. Yeah, oh, yes. There's, these politicians are going into these uh, public schools mm. and their little school fairs and recruiting under the alleged civic experience to mm. campaign for them. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah, we have a city council member who, um, who did that uh, recently and mm -hmm. had the uh, students come down to the Komene Young Municipal Center to uh, watch the council meeting under that same uh, guise that you're saying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Should we go to this caller? Oh, sure. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Yes, this is Tyrone calling back real fast to ask Rosemary this question. You remember, uh, Rosemary, I was saying, I want to know how, uh, say for instance, we send somebody but that we know, lives in Detroit, bought a house, and we send them as the political situation is now under the autocratic form of dictatorship. We sent them to Washington, and they get uh, uh, some, a couple of pork chops. And I want some of that pork chop. Do it go to city nice. council, <laughs> the governor, and then the financial manager has the final say on how that money is to be used, like the budget. They even control that. Do and. Uh, how would that pork chop get to me and the other Tyrones in the neighborhood? To, 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 this would determine for me what fight is I should be fighting. Should I be fighting a dictatorship or just going on like that don't exist and send somebody to Washington, get paid, and get a, a retirement check, but they can't get me none of that pork chop? How would that pork chop come to me with the political setup that we got now? You're not going to see it, Tyrone. You're not going to see for it. Thanks for the call. Thanks for the call. Yeah, because the money, like, I, I know someone called me about some millions of dollars mm -hmm. that were supposed to be provided for illiteracy or adult people who have who have not learned to read and write. Mm -hmm. And they called me yesterday, and that's like, I'm, tomorrow I'm going to start checking out Pathway to something, and mm -hmm. no one seems to know where the money is or where it went. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be... Uh, it goes into, I know what the answer is, it goes into administrative costs, it's diverted into other agencies, and they say, oh, it's being used for that purpose. They're mm -hmm. going, those people are specialists, they'll help with this, that, in the schools, or the adult classes. I mean, um, you're right, Tyrone, uh, you're not getting a piece of the pork chop, and we really should get a piece of the pork. Everybody else in the country is. Mm -hmm. Detroit has just been misused and abused. And abused, I agree. And then the other thing that's sad is the uh, fact that Congress runs by seniority. Mm -hmm. Whoever we vote for starts at the bottom. And I think the John Conyers did us a disservice by um, retiring. Um, yeah, well, look how fast New York moved in. Mm. Uh, it was the first criticism, I guess, was from a black congressman mm -hmm. up in, I'm not going to say, it, Meeks, was it? Or yeah, I guess mm -hmm. it was Meeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they put that fellow from New York on to replace Conyers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, but if Mr. Conyers did, uh, did look after us in his own way, but he didn't deliver the pork, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. They, look at this city. He mm -hmm. could have brought more money here. He had, a, he had an inside track with mm -hmm. Mr. Obama. Mm -hmm. But he just and lost those skills. He didn't. He didn't use it. No, well, he for, didn't use for it for years. He didn't use it. That's. Uh, I mean, that no. used to upset me. I used to talk to Mr. Conyers about mm -hmm. that. What are you going to do for us? <laughs> you know, he helped New York. He helped the uh, the music industry, which is important. I mean, I know it's important. Other mm -hmm. things for a national level are important. Well, what about us? Mm -hmm. No so I'm, I'm just hoping we'll appoint somebody who's a real politician who's going to bring the bacon home and let all of us have a little piece of the right, pork. Right, right, right. You know, one of the things I like to raise, and I, I believe Vera may have raised it in terms of... What'd you say, uh, my mayor? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the, the <laughs> no, please, yes. please. Mr. Uh. Carpetbagger is always after me. <laughs> no, no, uh -uh. no. But but what 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 I find curious is that when uh, we speak of these mega churches mm -hmm. and uh, 
their powerful influence and the fact that they open the door to uh, politicians because yeah. it's more of a quid pro quo kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. That uh, when Charter we look schools. at the precision, yeah, especially mm -hmm. at, we look at how the uh, electorate itself comes out 20% or less, you know, particularly in this last, uh, and we, we're not even certain what's going to happen in this midterm, which is critical, but how do you know and it's always the question how do we galvanize the people who feel like they don't have any stake in it at all so they've just thrown their hands up and abandoned it and i do appreciate what you said earlier about uh the grassroots which you know we're from but how do we even get them to see their own stake in the, in the outcome of uh elections mm -hmm. they have his, over the decades detroit's been beaten into the ground I mean, I mean, that's, but we have this grit. We do have the spirit. We do have this fight. And I believe we can reunite it. If we really would stop fighting among ourselves, okay, water is a, is a priority. Um, homelessness. We, we in the grassroots look to those issues and we try to find, and we, and we, and while we're doing this, we're being manipulated, and the big decisions are being made. We got to be broader in our interest, in our activism mm -hmm. about changing. We should really, I mean, I always say to people, it's all about economics. Mm -hmm. The bottom game is money. Money. Mm -hmm. And. And, and we're giving all our energies and, and compassion into all these social issues, which are important. But we just have to start looking, where is the money? Mm -hmm. If we would start following the money, we would, we would answer a lot of questions. If we could just get that information out into the community. Mm -hmm. We had some little grassroots oversight. I'd love to see some oversight from the community again. It used to be in the old days. You just go on the phone and say, she's a bum. Don't vote for her. You know, mm -hmm. I'd know. Hey, that's a bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the grapevine uh, is a very powerful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and we could reunite our grapevine yeah. again All and right. let us speak to one another. Mm -hmm. our, I like that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Start the grapevine again. Yeah, another call. Yeah, I heard yeah. it through the grapevine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We might have to use that as a tag for a political candidate. Right. Yeah. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Hi, slash, I go calling back from Comcast 91. Yes, uh, it, There's nothing but a gangster party in these United States. Since 2007, the DEA has taken $3.2 billion in cash from people not charged with a crime. So they're still practicing uh, what is known as civil asset forfeiture. Yes. Uh -huh. They're still practicing that. We got your looters in Detroit uh, okay. with, the, with the help of these mega churches and these so-called pumps from the pulpit mm -hmm. that is helping to uh, asylumize and demonize and criminalize and cause poverty in our community. We got the health issues going on where they for profit now. They care nothing about people. They will not uh, invest or create universal health care like they're doing in Canada. Canada has a universal health care. Mm -hmm. Other states have it. They will not implement an affordable uh, affordability plan for the water, which has been successful in other states. We will not. And somehow, maybe our rallies and our fights and our shutdowns would get them to listen to plans that work for the people and not for the greed and the corporations. Thank you for uh, taking my time. You're, you're welcome. And yeah, you know, uh, you no, know, I was just going to say, uh, Jonathan Kinlock's brother, Solomon Kinlock, who is a pastor, is interested in the name of the church's uh, triumph. Uh, that make you think of somebody that's president by the chance. Benny, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, all that energy we put into rallies and is very good. Mm -hmm. But I wish when we went to these rallies that there was some, some mechanism, like the grapevine, to say to people, to, in the crowd, in those gatherings where we're together and connected physically, mm -hmm. that we're there for that purpose, to protest, but that we gossip a little bit. We communicate. We exchange phone numbers. Mm -hmm. We just don't go to the call to, you know, extend the communication. 
among us. Now, at a, at a rally that, that you you're speak, since you brought that up, would uh, you say that if someone said, okay, did you know that uh, uh, Dagnogo uh, uh, agreed with the governor that we don't need to have a special election for a representative in Congress? And, uh, and then she turned around and ran for it for a minute. I guess if she realized she wouldn't get her pension if she didn't stay in Lansing. And uh, if, if you said uh, that she uh, agreed with the president of Michigan State remaining, I mean, how could you agree with anybody that a woman who had received complaints oh. about young women being uh, molested, raped, and all, that she stay as president of Michigan State? How do you agree with that? Well, I, I voted no on that too. I, yeah. I, I, I no, it's, see, I don't judge. I don't believe in lynch judge, in what, what I call lynch mob justice. Whenever mm. we have a mob mentality mm. about judging another person, I'm opposed to that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to get caught up in the hysteric. You have to do it rationally. You have to have a procedure, due process for that woman. That's all I said. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get rid of her, she resigned. She she killed the issue. She yeah, resigned. She, yeah. But the thing is, right now, what they do, they create a commission, and they're going to pay all these people all this money to do what? Yeah. Okay, there was a pedophile. He was convicted. He went to prison. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. move on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and protect these children, these young women. But, you know, again, it's a lack of communication. Why didn't these parents or these children communicate with one another? Right. I mean, right. Why, why, I mean how did it go on so long uh, without someone talking? 20 years. Yeah, Same. how did it go on? Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand that either. I mean, Except the, that the, he was the, making the, friends with the parents because his one father uh, had a five-year-old child that told him, and he said, oh, no, that, the, you know, he, he couldn't have possibly have done that. He didn't believe his own child, and then when he found out it was true, he committed suicide. The only problem is he didn't kill NASA first before he killed himself. Yeah, but the thing is, all of them are living through their children. They're forcing their children for celebrity and for gain, mm -hmm. financial gain or whatever their motives are. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can never understand it. Um, my yeah, sports I, kids yeah. played was for fun, I, yeah. you know, not to make a career. I mean, not to... And that's a tough trade, that gymnastics stuff. Mm -hmm. That's painful when I, I think about it. Yeah. Walking on that bar, that wooden <laughs> bar, I, I cringe. <laughs> they fall off. No. Um, no, I just don't believe in mob justice. I just, mm -hmm. uh, or the media uh, finding people guilty. Oh, like Conyers, he was pushed off from the media. Mm -hmm. uh, Franken was pushed off for supposedly touching somebody during a photograph. I mean, I God, now I'm like this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, I mean, it's just, it's, uh, but I want to talk about something new. Sure. Go ahead. Recent legislation. Yes. Okay. We now know that the driver responsibility fee law will no longer exist. Oh. Yeah. It's okay. been eliminated. Uh -huh. And I don't know whether you're familiar with that or not. I, I guess you have a good drink. You don't drive. Okay. Well, it was, <laughs> but it was supposed to be effective October the 1st, right, of this year? Well, it was before. Uh, no, it says beginning on this March, beginning March of this oh, year. okay. Individuals who entered into an agreement plan before February 1. Now, a lot of good citizens went, when they got the fees, they went and started their payment plans. Mm-hmm. They will have their outstanding driver responsibility fees eliminated. So if you were a good citizen and attended to business, you're going to have those eliminated. Mm -hmm. The month. others. I mean, last month. Well, the end of last month, yeah. March. Yeah, it's February. now April. So. I know, yeah, I know. But oh. you see, I'm talking about all the people prior. Okay. Who had prior to February 1, 2018, mm -hmm. had entered into a driver's responsibility fee system. Mm -hmm. They will have their outstanding driver, re driver responsibility fees eliminated. Oh. If there are uh -oh. no additional license actions pending. Uh oh. Okay. But people will be able to uh, otherwise be, you know, it helps a lot of people who have acted properly and went and have been paying. Okay. Okay. So they'll get the benefit. Mm hmm. Individuals who did not enter into the payment plan before February 1, 2018, are still responsible for paying their driver's responsibility, but they have payment options now. 
Mm. And then they're going to have a, a workforce development program that you can volunteer instead of pay, making payments. They can work it off. They can work it off. Uh-huh. And uh, the, all driver responsibility fees will be completely relieved and no further payment will be collected after October 1, 2018. Oh, that's an okay. And so people can get into a payment plan if they haven't already been paying. Mm. Now, the number at Treasury if they want to call it, is 1-800-950-6227. We have, we, have thousands, we have thousands of people in Michigan who have not been able to pay these fees. Mm -hmm. They've lost their license, mm. and they can't go to work. They lost their jobs. This has been one of the worst pieces of legislation, mm -hmm. punitive. Right. But it's gone now. But as it's going through the transition, there's hope okay, for not people a, to get this behind them. Okay. Now, the 800 number again is? 1-800-950-6227. 1-800-950-6227. Okay. And they can make pl this is the opportunity they can make payment plans and get their lives back on in order, mm -hmm. and then try to see if they can uh, qualify in a workforce development program in lieu of payment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now yes. we're not going to get all these callers in. We get the lines got oh. loaded real quick on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, hello, caller. You on the air? Could you be brief and uh, ask our guest or or make your comment? Okay. Hello, you're on the air. Um, yes, I would like to know how about the um, increase in the insurance on the car, 13%. A lot of people can't afford that. So what do we do about that? So they redlining, they still redlining. Yeah, the thing is... Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, 13% increase on the Yeah, car. I understand that, you know, we, uh, we always got people with... Uh, First of all, who profits the most from us is the insurance companies, mm -hmm. and they are one of the most powerful lobbies in Lansing, and um, they always come up with these fly-by-night scams, mm -hmm. you know, that look good on paper, but they're not, mm -hmm. and we just went through that in the last session mm -hmm. where there was this cheap insurance they wanted to sell, but it would have been a terrible penalty for people to have paid the effects of it were terrible. Is that the and one Mike Duggan pre yes, presented? Oh, yes. Yeah. And there was no, the, and that was also going to set up an authority. Oh. And, and oh, then it was no. all, you know, and the rates. And then there was no, there was no mandate that they'd have to reduce the fees if they could justify, if, if they had too many claims or they've had this or that. There was an out, a safety oh, release for the oh, insurance man. companies. Huh. If no one wants to, you know, sit down and compromise and really talk about a radical change, mm -hmm. and that's what's necessary. Okay. Hello, Thank caller. You. Could you give us a brief question or comment uh, to our guest? Uh, yes, I'm calling from the Comcast 91. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to know, for those of us that are not familiar with the driver's responsibility, I'd like your guest to explain what that consists of. Okay. okay, thanks Thank for you. calling. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't prepared to go into the details of the Driver Responsibility Act. It was passed a decade ago, and if a person got their license suspended, they were assessed $500 a year until they took care of it. it was, I'm, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as a result, people didn't have that kind of money, and they would not go get their license restored, and they just keep incurring more traffic tickets, driving mm -hmm. on a suspended license, and then it just kept piling up and piling up. They realized they, the error of their ways, the legislators. They, yes. What was the last comment? Okay. Hello, caller. Do you have a brief question or comment? Uh, our time is getting short. Okay, quickly. If someone calls that number, can they find out how to do the volunteer work as well as the payments that you uh, discussed? Yeah, Thank well, you. What the, what the, this number was given to me by the Treasury Department. They're still working out the details, by the way, so you have to be patient with them. But it says, for payment plan options, affected persons are asked to contact the state treasurer. That's people who had not entered into a plan before February 1, 2018. If you owe driver responsibility fees 
and you didn't get into a plan before February 1, 2018, you should call this number to find out about the payment plan options. And at that time, you can ask them about the, uh, the work, you know, volunteering, working, off, working, working it off. off with you. Okay. Now, um, are you saying that Andy Dillon is still in the treasures? Oh department? no, no, no. Oh, he was okay. there for. Oh no, he, you know, he, uh, left, yeah. uh, he left under a cloud. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A big cloud. Did they re relocate him somewhere else, or he's totally gone? I don't. From I think he's gone. It's oh, wow. like I never hear his name at all. That would unless be... see they got him in the basement janitoring. I don't know. That, well, I don't know what they sobering did. up. But uh, <laughs> we are unfortunately are at the uh, end of the program. Oh. Just don't understand where the time goes. But um, I always say it's not necessary for you to know everything. What is necessary is for you to know how to find what you need when you need it. And we at Hood Research seek out as much information as we can to help us all make better informed decisions. And we have had uh, State Representative Rosemary Robinson with us today to help clarify some of the uh, issues that you may have been thinking about or involved in. At the beating. If you want to be nothing, do nothing. But the only problem with doing nothing is you never know when you're finished. And make sure you register for the midterm elections. That's right. And I, I want to thank uh, we, Attorney and State Representative Rosemary Robinson for uh, being with us today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I love being here. Coming. I haven't right. been here in a while. I used, to be nice. over, I used to be on Victor Street all the time, mm -hmm. rabble-rousing. Well, <laughs> well, we're going to have to change that. <laughs> we thank need you. some rabble-rousing. We need our people to be motivated to get out to vote, motivated to make calls, motivated to share information that you know. We need that. And uh, now, stay tuned for Get in the Know with Marley, Marley B. B. See you next week. Peace.